this is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this Torchlight 3 video, I want to talk about the Forged. This is the robot type class, teapot, whatever you want to call it. But let's roll with teapot for this video, and I did name him Earl Grey in honor of tea. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about the Forged. The first thing I want you to know before we jump into this guide is I wanted to challenge myself before the Act 3 patch and play Melee. Melee was severely underperforming before the patch, and I wanted to really be appreciative of the melee changes when the patch did drop. So with that in mind, I suffered through, and once we got the update, the changes were incredible. However, I did change up this build quite a bit. I think I made like five or six different forges before I actually settled on a build that I liked. So now that we got that out of the way, it is a melee build. Melee would not be my recommended way for you to play the Forged, but if melee is your gig, hopefully you can find some tips in this video to help you out along your journey. This build is also going to be a starter build. We're gonna talk up and through the tree and kind of some things beyond it, and I'll do a follow-up build later on once I've had some more time at level 60 with the class. So as soon as you start the game and you're level one, you've made your brand new Forged, the game starts you out with Rapid Fire. A really decent starter skill and you, as you can see, I did plan ridiculous the whole way through. That's what I enjoy. It's more engaging for me. The game starts you out with rapid fire. So right out of the gate, you're going to have a range skill. I know I said it's a melee build. I recommend using this up until you can get your very first brawl skill, rapid strike. I would put one point into rapid strike just so you have the beginning of your melee toolkit. After that, I would put in, I would try to get to the tier three bonus on vent vortex bomb asap the tier three what it does at tier three is you get this it vents out like four different ways if you can see all four of those hit all the enemies basically four times so if you have them all grouped in that middle which you will because vortex does pull in all of those are going to hit and do a crap load of damage so i should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video i will have the text guide link down in the description below so you can follow it all the way through level one and i three crafted all the way to 60 you can see i'm 57 so i've tested the majority of it but the hardest part of the game currently since the end game is not out yet is starting out and honestly getting to level five another difficult part that i had in the leveling up process is transitioning between acts and the reason for that is each act or frontier has a different resistance type. So as you're going through the goblin frontier, you're gearing for fire resistance. And then once you get to act two, you then transition over to poison and then act three into lightning. So you can see why that would be problematic. Once you've completed act one, you have no poison resistance going into the new frontier or the new act. So what I suggest to kind of help you out is focus more on just the flat defense. Okay. Don't worry so much about the primary element do get some but don't focus that a whole lot <laughs> okay like don't totally ignore it you want it to be about 50 50 and that's speaking from experience i targeted the primary element all the way through and i really i struggled quite a bit and i think if i were to go back and redo it i would try to keep my resistances i think there's a cap on these i'm not entirely sure so i know i got a little bit off topic there with your defenses but basically try to keep them about 50 50. don't dump it all into the primary element okay so now at this point in your leveling process you're going to have a point in rapid fire a point in rapid strike and a point in, vor in a vortex bomb so this if you don't know this is this is how forged works okay and i probably should have i probably should have started out the video with this but the way the forge works is it uses a resource called heat. You have skills that build up heat. Basically, if they don't say vent to them, they build up heat. And you can see it down here. It's in your resource bar. So I'm using uppercut, which generates more heat, and that's part of the build. But <laughs> yeah, so you, you build up heat, and then you can use any of these vent skills to then spend the heat. And that's pretty much how the class works. You can see I'm getting a little bit of heat back when I use a skill. And that's just because here over on the Legendarium, you can actually get heat back, which there's, I know I'm way off track, but it's just something kind of cool. You can also get another Legendary to put in here. Uh, let's see, what's it called? The Mountain King's Tentacle and the Mountain King's Wheel. If you have both of those in here, you actually get 50 heat back when you vent any skill. So then what ends up happening is you can actually spam Fracking Strike this way. Endlessly. So, yeah, that's that's a thing you can do. This that skill's really 
it's it's okay. It's definitely not uh, my preferred top damaging ability, but kind of a little thing, <laughs> a little trick there, I guess you can uh, you can enjoy. So let's jump back into skills here. So as I said, I would be trying to get the Vortex bomb up as soon as possible. So I would go in there until up until you get level five, and then you have a choice for your movement skill, which is ramming robot, or you can get another vent skill, coal launch, or a shotgun blast. Shotgun Blast is a really nice cone AoE. I didn't use it in this build because it's a ranged skill, and I was trying to use the least amount of ranged abilities as possible so that I could be up in melee combat, because that's what the build is centered around, the kind of the challenge I gave myself. Then the other skill you can choose, which I do recommend to take, is Vent. You're going to want to be dumping out your heat, otherwise your skills that do generate heat, if you can't vent at all, you can't cast it. <laughs> so you can kind of see why you need to be able to vent. Um, coal launch is really nice for two reasons. First of all, the tier two bonus is what we're after. And it's also, it's a ground AOE type skill. The more heat you have, the more damage it deals. But what ends up happening is this coal launch is on the ground and it's burning enemies. This is an important part of the build. So any, any enemies that are standing in there actually take 25% more damage. And then at the end of the skill tree here that we'll talk a little bit more about later is the other tier two bonus, another 25% damage to burning enemies. So any enemies that are standing in that coal launch area then are taking 50% extra damage. <laughs> so definitely take coal launch and plus it up. <laughs> that, that would be my recommendation. I didn't take ramming robots simply because the new melee changes make it whenever you use a potion, it knocks back enemies. So you don't really need a movement skill, I guess, but it definitely would have saved my life a few times. So if you can fit it in, I'd go for it. However, I didn't use it in the build. Next up is at level 10, you unlock your tier three skills. This is going to be one of your main heat generator abilities, and this is called servo driven uppercut. Basically, it's a heavy hitting ability. It generates a lot of heat, has a chance to stun, and also deals double damage on the third hit, as you can see on the tier three bonus all around a legit skill and the tier two bonus critical hit chance for all of your brawl skills. So that'll also apply to your vortex and uh, cyclone and fracking strike if you decide to use them. So yeah, you can see my toolbar down here. That's the completed uh, skill bar. But anyway, <laughs> before we get off topic, I kind of want to just comment on all the skills and just kind of share my thoughts on them. And, and then at the end, we'll talk about exactly the rotation and the specific build here. So this skill power projection did see a tweak here in the update where the tier one bonus heals you for 15% of your total health on start. It didn't seem to work for me. I'm sure it's probably a bug that'll get fixed, but um, seemed like a cool skill. I, I didn't use it simply because it's bugged. Other, other than that, I, I probably would use it. The tier two bonus on here is nice as well. However, I think your block caps at like 40% chance. So it's, I don't know, not... Basically, I wouldn't put points into that for this build. <laughs> it definitely, if the if the tier one worked, it'd be nice to have a backup little healing thing there. Now, cyclone mode is, in theory, a really important part of this build for the tier two bonus that you can see. This is basically a whirlwind ability. I can show you what it looks like real quick. It's kind of a small area, so if you're after a spin to win type build, that would definitely be probably what you want to check out. I'm not a big fan of it, mainly because the area on the cyclone is really small. It just didn't feel that impactful but anyway i took it for the tier 2 bonus to test out the 15 percent chance to heal three percent of your total health on hit with all of your brawl skills so you don't have to use that skill that's a passive there but it does have a two second internal cooldown so three percent health every two seconds really adds up not being that much and the chance is really low as well i would like this to see a little bit of a buff just to help the melee sustain a little bit better so I know that we talked about, let's see, I kind of skipped over Barrage because as I said at the beginning, it's a it's a melee build, but uh, I can comment a little bit on this skill. Poison Dart's really cool. If you're doing a ranged build, it shoots out a Poison Dart and does a Poison AoE. And this would be also a really good synergy with Bane if you're trying to pursue a pet build, but not what this guide's about. So <laughs> let's move on to tier four, and this would end up being your level 15 skills. So once you've reached level 15 and distributed your points through Uppercut and maybe into Vortex, you can kind of decide, or you can follow the text guide that I kind of mentioned below. It's down in the description for you. 
But once you hit level 15, you then, we talked about Cyclone, you have some other options here if you're looking at Barrage. I guess this is going to be more of an overview video, guys. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. I, I like to just talk about the skills and just get a general overview, and then we'll jump a little bit more into a focused, structured starter build. How about that, okay? I think I can do that. A little bit off topic there, let's keep going. Level 15 skills, you get Sonic Pulse, which is a really nice ability, really good utility. You can see it increases all damage against the enemy by 40% for six seconds. Has some really good tier bonuses as well. So it, it is a cast on cursor when you first get it. If you get the tier three, it'll cast on you as well, so you can cover more area. But what I like to do with Sonic Pulse is just not put any points into it because on the Legendarium, you can actually get a legendary to cast that for you, which is the Mountain King's patch right here you can see. And if you have the full set on, which I happen to have on actually, it's a 100% chance whenever you use your Relic skill, which, I mean, I only have a five second cooldown, so you, you know you can kind of see how good that is, right? There you go. So that's Sonic Pulse. You know, I am missing out on the tier bonuses, but your skill points are a bit limited. Um, the other option here, if you're trying to range build, is Slugshot. Really good sniping potential and a lot of damage. This one was definitely my favorite back in Torchlight Frontiers. I, uh, it does a hell of a lot of damage. <laughs> definitely, definitely get that if you're going for a melee build. On to our tier five level 20 skills that you get at the very end of the skill tree, which 20, level 20 is pretty low nowadays, but um, you can get, an, they're both event skills. So fracking strike, we'll talk about that first. That's your melee variant. I showed you how you could spam that if you have the two legendaries that give you heat back. Basically it just makes the skill do a bit more damage to closer enemies for the tier one bonus. The tier two bonus is your relic active. So you can get a damage boost here for spinning blade which I think you can also pick up, uh, if you really wanted to focus on a relic type build, you could squeeze another 20% damage out of the ramming robot passive. Or uh, yeah, passive on the tier two bonus. I didn't do that for this build, but uh, definitely a viable option for leveling up and crushing stuff. And then on the tier three bonus, you get the fracking strike. The shockwave size is doubled. So not super huge. I mainly went into it for just the more damage because each time you level up, it increases the damage it does. So that was pretty much the brawler skill tree over here on barrage. This is your range skill tree. If you forgot by now, the, uh, the furnace blast event skill it sounds really cool in theory. Uh, once you have lots of mobs on the screen and there's a lot of visual clutter, the skill kind of loses its, like, oomph visually. <laughs> but that's what it looks like. Kind of cool. And I think the, uh, you yeah, on the Tier 3 bonus. I'm aiming for the Tier 3 bonus. I'll have enough points here to, uh, to grab that. But basically it just increases the Furnace Blast size by 50% on the Tier 3 bonus. And then, as we mentioned earlier, you definitely want the Tier 2 bonus if you're going after a burn build. Just to get the increased damage to burning enemies. And then also the heat cost reduction in the beginning so that you can, in theory, use it more frequently. So basically, if you take the uh, tier one bonus on Furnace Blast, you can cast it twice with the full meter of heat. Pretty viable skill, and it also sets people on fire so you can get more synergy there. But definitely not my highest priority skill for this build. Again, I just really wanted to do kind of a forged overview, I guess. At the beginning, I apologize, I did start out to do a starter build but I think I will do a more targeted build about this. This really ended up to be more of an overview and kind of just talking about all the skills on both the trees and my thoughts. Hopefully this video was valuable and informative and maybe you learned something new. And if I missed anything or you think there's anything more that I should know, let me know down in the comments. Let's have a chat. I guess one last thing we could comment on for the forged here a little bit is relics and relic choice. So there's five relics in the game. If you haven't seen them, I suggest checking out my big update video covering the Act 3. But if you go back and check that video out, it shows all five of the upgraded relics and what they've changed. I definitely recommend using the Blood Drinker. It has a high damage output potential as well as life leech while it's up. So whenever it's up for 30 seconds, you can, whenever you kill an enemy, you leech life and you can leech even more if you spec into it. And it's really good for melee. I think it has like a minute cooldown or something like that, but it's a really good life leech skill. They're all really viable options. Shock, the electrode one would be another one for good damage output. Um, you could go with cold heart for CC or 
Bane if you wanted to try more of the pet type build with that ranged. Using the uh, poison dart that we talked about, you could definitely do that. Oh, and I almost forgot one of the most obvious relics for the class is Flaming Destroyer. I've had lots of people ask what I think about Flaming Destroyer for, for uh, Forged. I think it's really good synergy, especially with if you're doing the burn build here. And you could probably really work that into a really good range build. For me, I went with Blood Drinker, just like I said, for the Life Leech and doing the melee challenge. But if you're not trying to do a melee and you're trying to do something else to the class, maybe a Flame Destroyer would be the best synergy wise. And last but not least, Legendaries. There's a lot of interesting ones. I won't spoil it all for you. We kind of, we talked about these heat ones where you gain heat whenever you event. Really good for uh, spamming some of the skills. Mr. Toasty's a cool one as well. It shoots down um, meteors. It's kind of underwhelming actually when you see it in practice and you've probably seen it in the background video that I've had playing with the combat and whatnot. Uh, my all time favorite set though is Mountain Kings just because it gives you more skills to brawler skill. It gives you more skill points for your brawler skills so you can actually have more options for your build. Uh, these are a little bit underwhelming. The Explodo bots are nothing to write home about. Oh, and we talked about the hatch. Definitely a good one for the Sonic Pulse. Um, you get crit chance. There's quite a bit there to really discover, guys. Again, I don't want to ruin all of it, but uh, yeah, that's the Forged Overview video that I've been wanting to do. I plan to do some other guides and videos more focused on the Forged, but like I said, I started the video and I just wanted to talk about all the skills. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. I can't thank you enough for your time and watching this video and all the videos on the channel. Your support means more to me than you know. If you enjoyed this video and all the content on the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good stuff. And feel free to check out all the social media links down below, hop on the Discord, whatever, tweet at me, let's have a conversation. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.